the Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook, talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them. Welcome to the Instructor Podcast. This is a show where I help you become an even more awesome driving instructor by speaking to leaders, experts, innovators and game changers. As always, I am your splendid host, Terry Cook. I'm delighted to be here and even more delighted that you have chosen to listen because today I am joined by the wonderful Fiona McMeekin, who is going to be talking to us about deaf culture and working with deaf learner drivers, including a cracking little story of a conversation she had with Love Day Rider and the impact that had on Love Day, as well as talking about the time she was asked not to take a deaf student on a standard check and instead asked to take a normal student. As well as that, we'll be discussing the difficulties and indeed the rewards of working with deaf students. But just before we dive into this episode, I want to take a moment to recommend that you go and click subscribe. Wherever you're listening, go and click subscribe or follow. So this podcast drops into your feed every time this new episode. We are coming to the end of season six. So you want to be making sure that you're clicking subscribe. So when we come back for season seven, that drops straight into your feed ready. But for now, Let's get stuck into the show. So today on the Instructor Podcast, I am joined by the ever delightful Fiona McMeekin. How are we doing, Fiona? Great, thank you. Nice to be here. Oh, well, I'm I'm chuffed to have you on because I I spoke to you a little while ago uh, for the first time, right, as proper conversation. And afterwards, I'm like, I want you on the podcast. There is things you've said today that I need to dig into and find out more. And my attitude is always... If I want to find out more, other people are going to find out more. So there's there's loads of stuff that I want to get stuck in with you today. But before we do, I'm going to ask you the question that I know you've been looking forward to. And I ask everyone to come on. So the topic, <laughs> the, the theme of the show is always leaders, experts, innovators, and game changers. So which one or ones of those do you fall into? Leader, expert, innovator, game changer? Uh, none. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't see myself as an expert. I see myself as having some knowledge. Um, game changer, no. Can't see that either. Innovator, no. And leader, no. So, no, I don't know. Somebody that follows um, a bit of knowledge. Are you attempting... Maybe not intentionally, but are you attempting to to change things a little bit around the areas that you're working in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Then, so then I would put you in that bracket because I don't think a game changer, when I'm talking about this, necessarily means you have done this and everything has changed because of you. You are in the process of changing the game, even if it might not be quite as uh, accidental potentially. Bring awareness then. Yes. I'm game changing it to trying to bring more awareness to yes. what I do. Put yes. it that way then. Okay, game changer then. <laughs> and I'm also going to say that you mentioned the ex- expert one that I, compared to me, you are an expert on the subjects we are going to be talking about today. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm go- I'm labeling you now. I'm labeling you expert and game changer, but you don't have to label yourself that. It's fine. More knowledge, more knowledge. Knowledge and awareness. They're not they're not bad qualities to bring. Knowledge and awareness. We'll we'll go with those. Um all right, but there were a couple of things I wanted to mention as well before we get stuck in because I, I met you in person at the, the the latest expo and um you have the best car decal I've, I've ever come across. Tell and do you it's for anyone that doesn't know, I may say if I can get a photo of this on the cover actually, but for anyone that doesn't know, it's bladdered in road signs. Yes. And it looks amazing. Now, yeah. am I right? You I, had to go to the DVSA to get permission to use that. I had to ask. I had to ask if it was okay if I use the road signs to go across across my car. Yeah, yeah, because um, there've been I think some days in the area that's had the kind of couple of road signs on, and um, there's some day down test centres had the word. So I thought, well, I've had this idea in my head for absolute years. This is what I want to do. So I asked permission. They went, not our problem. I was like, fine. <laughs> so I spoke to my friend who's a sign writer and um, back and forwards with them. Um, Thanks. I've had them on the last three cars, four cars. But Tara, certainly. The, Tara's the first car that's red. They've all been black. Right. I've purposely all bl- bought black cars. And then I saw Tara and I was like, I want you. 
and that's a really nice colour of red, and it's come out really well. It, it looks pretty. I'm a I'm a big fan and slightly jealous as well. Um, <laughs> I may copy this year. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <laughs> But I also wanted to mention that one of the things I've been doing on social media throughout December is sharing some of our highlights for the year. And mm. you are responsible for one of my highlights for the year. And it was on one of the premium calls we were on when you had an actual ghost in the background. Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently um, blurring your screen or your backgrounds on uh, Zoom doesn't work. You literally have to sit like a statue and not move. Well, if anyone... Uh, Listen, you have, I think, posters or pictures in the background and the face yeah, had come artwork. on over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah. I've got artwork on the background. Uh -huh. um, through lockdown, took up a hobby and um, my third bedroom has now been converted into an area where I just sit, take my time out. My mental health. It's what I do to, to keep myself nice and kind of level-headed. And I do have a, a picture, quite an obscure one, of Sarah from oh, Labyrinth. Right, okay. Right. So she's she's up on the wall and um yeah, she looks a bit scary. And she just popped out in the back <laughs> of my head after we'd had a discussion about ghosts. <laughs> I genuinely thought it was a ghost. I I, I watched a video back and I've never seen myself look as excited. I thought I'd seen yeah. a real ghost. I'm even more excited knowing that it's now Sarah from Labyrinth, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh -huh. I mean, I can see a couple of drawings in the back there, they're amazing. You say you started doing that for your for your own sort of self care. Yeah, lockdown. Um, kept coming up on Facebook actually as an advert. I thought, I wonder what that is. So um, I just bought a couple um, and uh, started doing them. And now I've discovered a company in America that makes them. And um, yeah, expensive hobby to have, but <laughs> keeps me mentally focused. It's just it's repetition. It's just a, a blank canvas, tiny little kind of like drill type thing that you just basically put onto a map. Um, and it's such a pest stuff. It just blocks everything out. And yeah, I'm sitting here with about 10 around me. So yeah, but that's that's what I do to, to keep myself calm, level headed, take time, my time, chill time. Very important. Maybe I'll make that the uh, the kickoff question for future episodes in how do you, what self care do you do? I don't know. We'll see. But the, the big reason I've got you on today is to talk about. The, the, the pupils that you work with, because you work with a lot of students with um, additional needs. Yep. Uh, and in particular, deaf pupils I want to ask you about to begin with, because this genuinely fascinates me. And I think the first question I want to ask you about, and I do want to talk about the learning process, but I'm keen to ask you how the driving test works. You know, when you take a, a, a deaf student to a driving test, how does, it, how, how does the test differ? Or does it differ? Yeah, you have to book a double slot. Um, it's it, that that's a wee bit of a strange one for me. I've had um, finally deaf pupils that can lip read, um, who go out and do the test and are straight back, same time as what your candidates would be. Um, they then have to if they've passed it fine, they failed it. They have to wait until another double booking slot comes up. I have tried in the past to try and get a normal slot, um, but it's to do with the examiner to be able to take time. It's not so much the candidate as such, it's, it's to allow um, more time pulled up at the side of the road, um, more time to be able to write things down or, I suppose, draw a diagram if they had to. Um, but I would say 50-50, I sit in the back and go as interpreter. You're not allowed an interpreter on test, but you're allowed to be a BSL interpreter. So um, I would go in the back of the test if it's somebody that doesn't lip read um, and has very poor understanding of the written English language, I'll go and sit in the back of the test. Um, there's actually quite a lot of things that can go wrong on a deaf test, so it's handy to be there just to sort of point out as a pupil got me out and test 10 minutes into it, sat nav went black, examiner's looking out the window. So she starts signing away to me and I'm like, okay, so I went for and so sat nav's gone black. But before I got that out, I get shouted at for communicating with the pupil. I says, well, her sat nav's gone black. Oh, right, 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 okay. So things like that, I think it also puts them a wee bit more at ease as well. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot, they do, um, they follow the sat nav superbly. Um, they are amazing at following the sat nav. Road signs can be a wee bit more trickier. It depends what their reading of written English is like. 
if you're following signs on motorway, then I've always put it's blue. Just follow the blue sign, you know, until otherwise, if it's a tourist, it's brown. So these wee things can be helpful. Um, but there was one, <laughs> there was one candidate who got pulled inside the road. And do you remember the time where they were doing the diagrams? Mm, yeah. Right. So it wasn't just follow the signs, but you were you were shown a diagram. So you had this sort of like, you know, a wee road turn right, traffic lights ahead, roundabout ahead. Um, so the examiner turned around to him, staring straight at him and said, end of the road, turn right, take second left, traffic lights follow ahead, roundabout, turn right, follow the sign for Borough Collection, I think it was, which is a museum, follow the road ahead to the next roundabout and then turn right at the next set of traffic lights. And I'm just sitting there going, okay. So then she turns around to me and she says, so do you want to tell them where we're going? And I'm like that, okay. So I was like, I says, ahead, turn right, traffic lights, ahead, roundabout, right, second roundabout, ahead. I mean, I was like forgetting it myself. Um, I says, and then traffic lights, right. I says, and you're going to follow the sign. And I'd sit there and spell out borough collection, right? And I'm like, nightmare I just went museum and then I kind of went colour brown and he was like cool <laughs> <laughs> I was like right that's that done um, and I think it was three times I had to repeat it and then each time I repeated it I had to shorten what I was saying so he would just go traffic light ahead, roundabout right, roundabout ahead, next set of whip, follow sign for this blah 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 and he did it fine but it was a lot of time spent with him and me backs and forwards and the examiner's just kind of because as much as I can sit there and sign the examiner has to hear what I'm saying yeah so my brain's working in BSL grammar and I've got to talk to her in English because it was a lady at the time so I've got to talk to her in English so that she doesn't you know because I mean I could have been telling them anything like blind spot you haven't checked your blind spot or get that working or stop doing this or and fair dues fair dues yeah um but yeah it's a uh, yeah, I mean the test process. Test process is interesting. They need they need deaf awareness. All examiners need deaf awareness. Um, I've offered to do it at our local test centre, and, and it's been declined, um, which is a shame because sometimes when they come out from the back to greet the candidate, their heads down and they're shouting Terry, 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 and I'm like, that's over here. You know, they're not looking. Yeah. At the actual candidate or. Pretty much, they know it's me. It's bringing the candidate. It's profoundly deaf anyway, so they would just walk straight to us and go hi, just a nice smile, hi, you know. Um, and then they've, obviously they've got to look at their email, look at the board, you know, sign, um, sign a declaration type thing. So that has to be explained as well because that's a legal document. So have you lived longer from two years in the UK, and um, is this card insured for for test purposes? So I have to actually sign that. Um, and during lockdown, that was quite difficult because they didn't want me near because I had two found the deaf candidates up during lockdown. They didn't want me near them. So I had to stand and explain, well, that's fine. If he fails, he's got to come back on you or DVSA because he's not understood the declaration he signed. And they will say that. They will say that. Um, so it's important that I, I am there because it is a legal document they're signing. So they have to have full understanding of what they're signing. And quite right. We can read it. They can yeah, something can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, w- I want to ask you about that specific example. Actually, the w- the one you mentioned where you were in the back having to translate for the student. What what do you think would have happened if you weren't there? Um, I haven't been there in, a, in you know a good few occasions. Um, they follow us that now. Um, one test, I'm pretty sure, got the full sat now for forty minutes because I don't think they were too sure of what to do sign-wise. Sign um, you tend to get the same... I, I found that I was tending to get the same examiner. When I go through all my notes and stuff and see the same person coming out, I kind of roughly know it's the same person that's coming. So they're not too bad. Um, they sometimes forget that the pupil can lip-read. Um, so they have to... They really do need to be careful of that. <laughs> a few bits of feedback from that um but yeah i mean they'll the, i i have a chat with them at start so when i go in and say right okay so you're going to go left um right roundabout ahead okay roundabout left first 
or sometimes round about head second or right third. And you've, you've got to kind of put up. I have to sign quite far out. Obviously, you're sitting next to them. So there's certain things. Um, if an examiner comes up to set a lights to change the green and the pupil hasn't moved, then they can just point, you know, wee things like that. They can just point. Yeah. If I'm sitting in the car on a lesson, then I'll point and go green. Now, I've had to switch because the, the green can be that for grass, green. Um, I mean, there's umpteen signs for different things, but to keep it short and simple, green or green. And that sign there is the Irish G so that my pupil can see it because they can't go like that and watch me do this. I have to have their eyes on the road. So the colour red is off the lip. So I've got to do the Irish R, which is I just twist my finger in front of them so they can see our red, okay, you know, and a point, you know, was pointing. But I always try and have a really good chat with the examiner first before they go out because this this, this is how a lot of them get the pupils or want the pupils to park up. So they do maybe four pull up and say, so flat hand out, hand in the middle, over that way and point. So it's directional, so over on the left. If you want to do a pull up on the right and reverse it back, it's the other way and point across the road. So I try and go through as many of them as I can. If they need to do some bit of traffic light, it's not out the way because you don't peer around a traffic light like that, which I did the first time I signed traffic light. It's inwards. So red, amber, green, so it's down. Um, so yeah, so I try and take a bit of time with them. I actually wrote for the examiners all the signs that I use. And I actually like park, okay? So left hand out, palm facing up, edge of hand in the center, move to the left and point so that they can read that before they go out. If they've got time, they can read it or have a look at it or take it away with them and have a good look at it. Um, because to the test through COVID, the point, the DVSA acknowledged that I could go in the back of the car, but left it down to the individual examiner and both said no. So I handed this sheet in for them to try and help them out. I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy. And I mean, they must panic a wee bit themselves. If the pupil goes the wrong way, the pupil's panicking because they can't communicate. And the examiner's panicking because they can't communicate. So, yeah, it's quite, it's quite scary. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I mean, you mentioned before about the, um, you'd love that all examiners have deaf awareness. What do you mean by deaf awareness? Is that signing or is it a more basic form of that? Or um, How to greet the person um how deaf culture works a lot of the examiners will come out their heads down in their pads they're probably reading their name they're not it's it's not an intentional thing it's not uh you know all right okay well here comes the person i'll just stare into my thing they want to see a face facial expressions are very important in sign language so you know if an examiner comes out and goes terry that face is already said oh so they've read an awful lot of that facial expression. But if the examiner comes out and goes, Terry, then they're like, oh, good, good. This is, I'm feeling good now, I'm feeling good. So it's all down to a lot of things I've done with the, you know, facial expressions. Don't come out shouting. You know, um, a profoundly deaf person is profoundly deaf. They're not just deaf, they're profoundly deaf. They don't, some of them don't wear hearing aids. Some of them have cochlear implants, which help kind of give some sort of sound. But even then, talking to some of my pupils with the background noise of the car, um, it's very difficult for them to pick up sometimes what somebody's saying. So if it's a quiet speaking person, it can be quite tricky because it just merges into what they're hearing. Um, but a profoundly deaf person is not going to you know, shout all you like. More than likely, they're not going to hear it. And that's quite a common thing, is yeah. that people will come out and shout, can you hear me? Am I talking loud enough? You can scream from the house, mate. They're not going to hear you. <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting because, like you say, you're not saying that they should all go and learn sign language. Now, obviously, that would be an ideal scenario, but you're just saying you want that awareness raising. And some of the stuff you were saying there, I wouldn't have thought of. I mean, you mentioned the um, – and this is what resonated with me. Then you mentioned, like, the, the expressions as they're calling the name. Now, I could hear the difference in – your, your expression by the by the way you spoke yeah uh -huh. so my first thought was yeah but i can hear that so why do you need to see it but then i thought well also how much more nervous i'd love your thoughts on this how much more nervous would a deaf student be because not only are they going for a test but they're also going for a test with someone that they know doesn't sign yeah 
Well, they've got that extra pressure. So is it uh-huh. more nerve wracking for them? Is it harder? Um, I, don't, I think it's, yeah, I do think it's harder, but not necessarily, not maybe not necessarily because they're deaf. Feedback from my students have been that they struggle with exams, they struggle with tests. So, and that's the pupils that I've taught. I'm sure, I mean, I've got, I've taught, I've found a deaf person who's got a degree. Right, I've got uh, one at the moment who's got a degree, but they've had interpreters with them through that process. When they're sitting exams, just as much as the theory test, there's somebody there to interpret the question and interpret the answers into their language. But to come into a driving test and know that they can be asked, like a practical driving test, where they know that they can be asked questions and not quite understand. I mean, one of the tests... Why was in the car? No problem at all. Next, and I'm standing back because of COVID. We weren't allowed to be in the test centre. Next minute, you know, somebody's shouting my name, and I kind of looked up, and it's the examiner of my pupil. Okay, come here, come here, come here, come here. So I'd already kind of said on the sheet that there's certain. It's not so much certain things. It's just difficult to do. So anti-lock breaking system. There is not a sign. I, do, I have not come across asking all my pupils if there is a sign for anti-lock breaking system. It's finger spelt. OK, so goes over, sits down. She says, could you please ask your pupil, um, how would they know if the anti-lock braking system has failed in this car? And I kind of looked at her and I went, really? And she went, uh-huh. I said, we'll be here for about five minutes. And she <laughs> went, that's fine. So you yeah, we're finger spelling it. And I'm like, and he's, he's going, uh-huh, uh-huh. And he's going like this. And I'm like, right, wait. Um, so finish the question. And then he kind of went like this. And I says, well, he's indicating amber and I'm like what amber what and he's like light and I'm like right okay where and he's like (laughs) there the dashboard so it's not a question that a lot of the questions we would you know pupils are all primed your antelope breaking system has failed how do you know well there's going to be an amber warning light it's going to come up in the dashboard it's going to be ABS and uh, it's going to sit a bit there they you know amber you know right okay where there okay what's it going to say and he's like a b s right good we've done it question answered let's go (laughs) so it's not done in the same format because they don't work that way you're asking a question to give you an answer you ask them the next question to give you that answer you ask them the third question to give you that answer yeah so yeah before i move away from that i want to touch just a little bit on you got an interaction you had with love day rider (laughs) Um, because you've told me this story before, and I think that the, it, it, do the listeners good to hear it because I, I think you know what story I mean. So I'm just gonna I'll let you take it away rather than give it an introduction. Yeah, with um, MSA meeting, uh, and uh, there was to and fro in between one of our guys, and uh, yeah, I uh-huh, ended up getting a hold of her and basically signing signing my question to her, and she didn't have a clue. And I said, well, now you know how, how my people feel type thing. You know, same my people, but my, my pupils, my candidates that I bring up. Because if you didn't understand the question that I just didn't ask there, you know, what 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 luck have they got? I like Love Day Rider. And I might be in the majority or might be in the minority. I don't know, but I actually quite like her. I think she's very approachable. And she has listened and she has taken a few things that, you know, we've discussed and stuff. And, and she's gone, no, I wouldn't even have thought that. Even somebody turning around to me and going, do you know, Phil, I wouldn't even have thought of that. That's a breakthrough. Whether anything gets done about it, well, to be fair, the deaf candidate pack came out. So, you know, be it if, you know, if she does do anything about it or doesn't do anything about it, it's the fact she's actually had to take a minute and go, right, there's also a point as well where I think I, I think a Tatara just fitted with all the adaptations in it, and she'd gone for lunch, and the one of the gentlemen she was sitting next to had said, "You know, Fiona's car is actually kitted out with adaptations," and she was actually unaware that you could drive a vehicle with adaptations, and I think a lot of people at the table were like, "What?" You know, kind of looking at what? How do you think people know legs like, drive a car? How do you think people, you know, with one arm steer and uh, and I think she was quite kind of like, all oh, right, okay. Um, and she did ask to come out and see the car. She's run out of time, bless her. But um, she did ask, actually ask to come out and see the car. But it's, it's, it's all about bringing awareness. I mean, 
it's, it's just, it's awareness. You can't fault somebody for not knowing about something until it's brought to their attention. That's fair yeah. dues. But the, uh, I mean, I had a big fight for my standards check to, to actually do that with a profoundly deaf pupil. Um, and that was a conversation with my AC that was going to do it. He was up for it. He was like, this is going to be brilliant. Be interesting to see how it works. Phone call two days later. No. No. DVS David Raleigh brought up a normal pupil. And I says, and what's a normal pupil? Because I don't teach them. You know, if you're, if you're looking like that, I don't, you know. Um, and he says, the reason that the DVSA would rather you didn't bring up a deafly, uh, profoundly deaf pupil is because they are worried that you won't be able to fill, fulfill the criteria in the marking sheet. Wow. Thought that was down to me to fill that and show that I can I can do it. So I ended up with the pupil. I thought, do you know what? If they fail me, they're not happy about it. Doesn't matter. I'll go back and do it again. And um, yeah, there was a lot of to and fro about it. But it's it's very different. The deaf culture, when I talk about deaf awareness and talk about deaf culture, deaf culture is, um, I have to physically touch the pupil. We all know as driving instructors, that's a massive no-no. Um, so I had to get, I had to explain, I had to explain a whole load of stuff to the examiner before we actually went out because, um, you know, how at the start and the, the stamps check came out, they were all about risk and responsibility. Okay, so risk and responsibility. Risk. Is also a sign for fetish or prostitute. So you have to be very careful, right? And you also have to, I mean, the first couple of times I signed it, I was getting sniggers. I'm like, right, what's going on here? Home messaged a few people and says, right, risk, this is a sign I'm using. And they laughed. And I'm like, right, what is it? What am I doing wrong? Ah, well, sometimes it's also a sign for fetish. I'm like, right, okay. But it's it's my sign, it's what I wanted to do, is I'm happy with it. They're both near there, so I'm not having to move too much. And I thought, right, okay, so the pupils are all prepped. You're going to have a bit of a laugh at this. Rest, responsibility, blah, blah, blah. Had to explain to this to the SE. I said, I'm going to do a sign. This is risk. This is responsibility. You might get a giggle. I said, she's not meaning it. She's not, you know, denying the possibility of risk. I said, but it does mean another word. So it was like, right, okay. Um, I have to touch the pupil. Now, normally, if you're in a situation where I don't know, say you're making somebody a cup of tea in your in your house and they're petting your animal and they've got their back to you, I would just stamp the floor and the vibrations get them. Okay. Yeah. In a car, you can't do that. I could be stamping the floor from now until the day I die. It's not going to make any difference because they can't feel the vibration of me between the vibration of the car. So I, t- I tap their, their arm. I'll tap them. If it's urgent, I'll tap their arm. If I haven't been able to get their attention out front type thing, I'll tap their arm. So I had to ask for, for permission. This is deaf culture. This is how the deaf community works. So me having to ask her permission to touch her or have to touch her arm if I needed to, generally by that point, I wasn't having to. But if I had to, I had to have her permission so the examiner was happy in the back. And I'm like, but it's deaf culture. And even she said, she went off on a tangent, it's deaf culture. How else are you supposed to get my attention? The man in the back's asking. And she actually turned around and she went, hmm, yes, like that. And I was like, good on you. <laughs> because they need to be aware, you know, of it's their culture. We're stepping into something that belongs to them. And we'll be back with more from Fiona in just a moment because I want to give a quick shout out to some of the latest signups to the Instructor Podcast Premium. And they are James Smith, Ian Howarth and Jenny Gibbons. So big thank you to those guys for signing up. They get immediate access to a whole wealth of content and trainings available in there right now with more added every month. But as well as that, they also get access to some really cool discounts, including the latest, which is from Vehicle Smart, who offer a free upgrade to all members of the Instructor Podcast Premium. So Vehicle, it's like the garage in your pocket, it does all the HBI checks, all that kind of cool stuff. As members of the Instructor Podcast Premium, you get a free upgrade with them. But that's not the only bonus you get as an Instructor Podcast Premium member. You also get a £10 monthly discount off Bob Morton's client site loading. You get a 16% discount off Go Roadie. You get a 10% discount off all the ADI PDI doctor sessions. And you get a 5% discount off the Guild of Mindful Drivers, 25% discount off Coach of the Geeks Turbo, and a 20% discount off all Cowley's Instructor Training Sessions. 
So loads of bonus discounts for you over there as well. So if you head over to the Instructor Podcast Premium, sign up. You can see you can start making your money back pretty soon in uh, in a variety of different ways. The best place to go for more information is the website, www.theinstructorpodcast.com, or you can check the links in the show notes, or you can drop me a message. But for now, let's get stuck back into the episode. It's, I'll be honest here, brutally honest, that kind of what you told me there, that's the sort of thing that pisses me off. I'm a, I'm actually quite a, I'm going to lose listeners now. I'm actually quite a fan of the standards check. I like a lot of the competence on it. I like, mm-hmm. I wish it was longer. I've got things I would change, but the, the basic premise of the standards check, I really like. But to turn to you and say, we would rather you brought a normal student it's completely disrespecting what you do. Well, I mean, the word normal is disrespectful in itself, but it's disrespectful of what you do because you can fulfill all those competencies with what you do. You just have to do it a slightly yeah. different way. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a two-way thing in a way because I it had been about seven or eight years from, from a check test. Um, and the one before the last check test I did I took up a girl who um, a special needs. The examiner, the essay at the time it took that one out. It it wasn't his, it wasn't his gig. Let's put it that way. Okay, so he didn't quite agree with some of the methods I was using that were getting through to her. Now, bear in mind this is this is a check test, so you know, see the fault, analyze the fault, them do the fault, all that kind of stuff. So you're seeing it, you're telling them sort it right. So. There were certain things that I was probably doing at that time, which was what's happening up the road to get them thinking, I need to look further. Or set traffic what colour are they? They're green. Okay, what do you think could happen? Whereas that was probably a wee bit not quite in the realm of the check test. Okay. The end of that check test, the quote I got given was, take your pick, pish, pish, put a crap. I got my four and I was like, oof, get out of the car. I'm not. I said, this person's got special needs. That I can't. We're adapting a lesson to them, how it helps them, how it reminds them to be doing certain things, how it filters into their brain, how it sticks. It's not about us. It's not. It's about her. No, no, no. This is a check test about you. I'm like, right, okay, fine. So for two years after that, I just sat and worried, worried, worried. What was I doing wrong? Blah, blah, blah. Because up to the next check test, take something similar. Um. She was also going through getting checked for colour blindness, which is rare in girls, right? It's rare in female, runs the male, the male gene mostly. Um, and um, I had to basically take her through the, what do you see up ahead? How do you think you're going to deal with this? What's your thought process here? You know, give me a reason why you're not going to overtake that. Um, you know, what's your approach in the roundabout? Sometimes at this a roundabout that was busy, I would say happy. And that was her cue to then go, actually I am, yes, uh-huh, and I can go. Right, so just wee things that were put in place for her. Um, get back at the end of that. The SC at the time got out, walked out of the car, took the pupil back in the test centre, came back out, folded up that paper, shoved it inside, and he went, One of the best lessons I've ever seen in 25 years, outstanding. And I'm like, What have I done different? <laughs> right, what have I done different? But he knew and understood. To me, he had more empathy. He understood what I was trying to do. I had a wee quick chat with him beforehand about our special needs and he was interested. And he wanted to know how we were going to get, you know, this person to test level. He was genuinely engaged, genuinely interested. And the feedback um, he gave to my pupil, never mind me, I'm out of the way, the feedback he gave my pupil was excellent. He was, he's retired now, unfortunately, which is a shame because it's a a massive loss to our industry. But, you know, he was just so good. So I wasn't seen for a good while after that. And then, of course, when it called to the standards check, you've got this whole thing going through your head of what's happened to check tests ago. Should I be taking up someday? Well, the date and time they sent me fell right on top of this, providing deaf pupils' lessons. Um, so I'm just going to take them. But it's, it's, it's me wanting to know that I'm doing the right thing and teaching them in a different language and still managing to get told by the DVSA effectively that I am doing my job right. Because there's nobody, apart from getting up and getting test passes, test fails, whatever, looking at your minors, looking at your, your series or whatever, 
you need you do it in the back of your head do need somebody to turn around and say yeah you've got that you're doing that fine you're doing that right um i mean the marking of the of the standards check my point was picked up that i didn't have sat there was a uh, sat nav lesson with our maneuver recap sat nav wasn't on volume I'll, I'll rephrase that the volume the, the speaking lady or whatever you want to call her wasn't on the sat nav so i get pulled up for that so why wouldn't I have what? Mm, mm, who have I just had in the car? Who have I just had in the car? Can she hear it? No. Who's the, who's, who's the lesson geared for? Your pupil. Can she hear it? No. So I don't need the sat nav. But majority of my pupils go to test with no sat nav and they request it on the test. Um, and that's hearing as well um, because it's confusing. I can't tell you what's 300 metres down the road or two feet down. I haven't got a clue. I'll just follow the blue line. So, um, but yeah, it was. it's more about somebody turning around to me at the end of the day and saying, yeah, that was a good lesson, that was well structured, that was nice done, that was this, that was that, getting some nice positive points um, and knowing, right, I'm doing it, I'm doing it fine, I'm doing it right. So it's, re- it's reinforcing for me as well. Yeah. No, that, that, that that's, that's reassuring for me, actually, because I was, you know, I don't like the, the, the way that that interaction went down, but... Yeah, it's good that you had that examiner, even though it's a shame it's left. But the the testing process as a whole, so whether it's your students, whether it's you, is there improvement there in the way that's been conducted? You mentioned the deaf candidate pack before. Are mm-hmm. we starting to see improvement there, even if it's not enough? Um, it's better than nothing. <laughs> uh, does the deaf candidate pack work? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of it, okay? But they've done something. They've tried to do something. It's too much written English. And it's 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 just, it's, it's English, English, and cards, cards of just reading. And when you've got somebody whose English isn't their first language, a lot of the language in English doesn't exist in DSL. They're nervous. They've been handed this card. So you can see the examiner... You know, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Even though they've got extra time, you can still, it's a feeling. So they, they read it wrong or they'll take in the information wrong or whatever. It's just too much. I would prefer, unless I know my pupil is really, really good at, at uh, reading lips, lip reading, then I'll go in the car. I'll go in the car. It's easier for them. It's more helpful for them. And it's a clear cut instruction in my eyes. Um, could they do more? Yeah, we all could do more. So that's, um, yeah, I mean, deaf aware, get every single test centre in the country a deaf aware course done so that they know how to greet um, and they know how to communicate and, you know, what's good, what's not, what's offensive, what's not offensive. But they're tra- they've tried to the deaf candidate pack. They haven't published what they've given to the examiners, funnily enough. I've not actually seen what the examiners, I'm pretty sure I've not actually seen what the examiners get. I've seen the candidates' death pack. Um, but, I mean, as I said, I put I, I sat and wrote down all the signs that I do and gave them literally, you know, this is how you do it. Put your hand to your point over there, do that traffic lights. You know, hand facing you, up for red, in the middle for amber, down for green, and just kind of pop your fingers out. So I've, I've done all that. I've explained all that. And, I mean, you can just hope that they bother to, to look at it if they've still got it. I don't know. Well, it's a two-part question for you here then, because the way you describe this sounds very rewar- very rewarding, but also quite intimidating. You know, for me, it's like the the idea of doing what you're doing, it to me sounds quite intimidating, scary almost. So is it intimidating when you get into it would be the first part, but also I'm keen to ask, do you need to be able to, you know, to use sign language to teach a deaf student? No, no, um, no. What I tend to find is that the pupils that I tend to get are the ones that have struggled with somebody that's not been able to sign, put it that way, okay? Um, I don't think, I think there's only been one pupil that's come to me from scratch. The rest of them have tried and struggled. There's just been certainly things that they've just not been able to understand yeah, it's um it's I mean I did my level one, did my level two, I did my level three, no intention of teaching. 
no intention of teaching, just something I wanted to do for myself. And my tutor said to me, right, here's a list. A few people want lessons, go see them. Um, I definitely would say that anything under a qualified level three, I think you'd struggle. I think you'd really struggle. A lot of the, I mean, I'll still get into the car and I'll say something and because it, it's so regional. So this wee, this wee girl lived on this side of the street and this wee girl lived on this side of the street. This one was, was um, born brought up in Aberdeen, but she was also Protestant. This wee girl was born brought up practically in the street she lived in, but she was Catholic. So her signs were Irish-based, whereas the other girl's sign from Aberdeen and Protestant was Aberdonian-based, I'll say, but Scottish, you know, not Catholic signs, okay? Um, Irish alphabet and all that. Uh, so her sign, I would go and pick this one up, and I'd be signing away to her, um, and that'd be fine. And then I'd go pick the next one up. I had to change. I had to change what I was doing, what I was thinking. And because the signs that this one used wasn't the signs that this one used. So you're constantly, and they, were both, they both knew each other. So they both did actually know each other's signs, which was fine. But blue, to me, that's blue. So if I was describing a blue sign, it's blue. It's like water, fish, you know, blue. Mouth pattern tells you as well. Whereas hers was that, blue. So that was an Aberdonian sign. So you're 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 you were constantly kind of moving between the two. It's not um so it's it is very important that you have a decent level. So your level three, I would say minimum, if you were wanting to learn sign language and not offend. It's it's I you know, going in at beginner's level or level one, you could actually offend. Whereas by level three, you've got a good understanding of the grammar, you've got a good understanding of how to sign it, you've got a good understanding of words that you would not use, some words that you can use. Um, so it's really, really important that if you're going to use sign language, you basically start teaching once you've gained your level three. Nothing wrong with being able to sit there with somebody with a pen and pad and lots of drawings, there's lots of time spent at the road. I tend to teach on the move because I've got the sign language there, I can teach on the move and get it going quite, quite quick. But yeah, uh huh. Sign language just takes it probably that just that wee bit higher. Just bring somebody into a total understanding of what they're doing. I mean, they are driving a killing machine. Yeah. Yes. You know, so you really want that total understanding. But the theory test for them is horrific. Horrific. Well, I want to come back to the very second because I'm, I'm presuming regarding the sign language stuff that. How can I phrase this without sounding condescending? Um, that someone that was deaf would be maybe grateful is the wrong word, but appreciative that you are attempting to learn sign language. So even like you said, that offence may be taken, that they will see that you're trying rather than someone that isn't making any attempt, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um... Almost like when you go abroad and you try and learn the language to help uh, when yes. you go abroad rather than go and expect the person that's abroad to speak English. Yeah, but they're also paying me for a service. Yes. So I need to be at a standard that they can understand and I can keep the car safe and I can get them to stop or slow down or deal with a roundabout. Or, I mean, you've got somebody that's looking to the right and the roundabout and, you know, they're just learning what their gap is. First of all, explaining what the gap is. Um once they've got onto that, you know, once they're ready and they're going, I've then got to sort of see the gap and then actually, like, get their attention. So it's like, you know, tap their arm, go. And then they know that that's a big enough gap that they understand that they can get going in. So, I mean, I could sit there and not and just sit there and do nothing, which the test time they are, they're absolutely fine. But when when you're teaching them and yeah. explaining to them, you know, what a gap is, because... Everybody's gap's different, whether you're hearing or deaf. Everybody's gap for that for going is different. But they can't hear certain other things coming. They're not aware of maybe a motorbike coming up the side, so they're constantly checking. You know, their eyes are everywhere. They will spot stuff before we hear it. But it's, it's yeah, it's, it's uh-huh. Yeah, they're appreciative, but at the same stage as they're paying me for a service. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And what would you say to instructors? So I'll include myself in this. As I said, I listen to you talk, and it sounds a bit scary. Um, you know, would you be advising people to, you know, take up sign language, learn BSL, and and you know, 
embrace this? Definitely. You know, how scary is it? It's not. Um, it's hard work. Yeah. Um, it's hard work. It is expensive. And you have to be, you have to immerse yourself with a lot of different signs that are, you know, lots of different kind of like grab people that are profoundly deaf and sign. It's something that you have to keep up. You've got to keep doing it. I mean, probably through lockdown, I could see by the time I came out of lockdown, I dropped again because I wasn't constantly doing it. I wasn't going to, we've got deaf, um, deaf pub. We're all meeting a pub and we're all sitting there signing. So, um, you know, and I'm going as a hearing person into that environment and I'm very appreciative that they accept me. Um, but all the, you, sit, you can sometimes just sit and watch about four or five different conversations types things. You've got to watch that as well because you're just so mesmerised and you're trying to pick, 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 pick all these different words and different things. And, well, you've got a sign for that. And, oh, that's not my sign. And, and interact and all that. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's not easy. It's a massive commitment. It's a massive commitment. And you do have to have the time. You've got to do videos. You've got to, you get quite a bit of homework to do. You've got to watch tape videos, watch them back. Probably a bit like what you do. You'll sit, you'll do something, you'll watch it back. Um, you've got to be able to pick things out. I sign out, so I I'm always signing out here. So I'm a good bit away from my body, but my signing space is very close. It's very close to your body. Um, but I have to do that because I'm in a car. Um, so my arms are always stretched out signing. Um, whereas you know your sign space is, is is roughly here but yeah I mean definitely do it it's so rewarding it's so rewarding if MD can find a class near them just make sure that the person that's taking the class is profoundly deaf themselves you don't want to go to hearing <laughs> don't go to a hearing tutor please go to a profoundly deaf tutor that's where you learn because you have to Where's the best place to go? Is there like a, an ideal place, or do you just have to basically look for local places to you? I think most well in Scotland, most colleges I think do an A class, level one, level two. Mm. Um, I know I did mine at um, it was Island College, and my level two was at City Glass City College. I think it's that now, and that's my level two was there. It's the same tutor for level one, level two. When I went to school for level three, I had school, but the class is private. It wasn't available in a college. So you're looking to find somebody that, you know, has all the, does all the levels or whatever. Um, I actually joined a class where um, this tutor had already taken through the level one, level two into level three, whereas I'd just gone to the college. Um, and then you take it from there. So, yeah, uh-huh. Um, it's just making sure that the person that is, doing the, the course, I would say, is profoundly deaf because it really pushes you. Yeah. Because you don't want to offend. You don't want to offend. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, like, trying your hardest and, you know, and, and yeah. you get the facial expressions and, you know, I think I was saying to you before, there's sometimes I've got to turn away and I've got to, because I don't even need to. You can sit in a room and have a conversation and then just throw one look and the whole room knows. They even need to sign it. They just know what you're thinking or what your comment was. Or it's 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 amazing. It's amazing language. It's beautiful to watch. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you about the theory as well because here's my naivety, and I'm I'm 100 certain it's my naivety. They'll be reading the questions, so why would hearing or not being able to hear pose a problem? Um. Right. Okay. So. I had a bit of an issue with this recently, actually. Um, right, so a theory test has uh, you've got the option of two small screens on your on your on your computer screen. Um, one of them will quite happily sign questions, so they'll sign whatever question it is. Another wee one can pop up, and it can be somebody else signing that's giving you all the answers. So you A, B, C, D. Now, I'm Scottish. Most of my sign language is Scottish based, probably a wee bit of the Irish in it. Um, I'm not English as such, so there'll be signs um, that I'll use that will be different from somebody down south. Plus, for the fact it's all regional, okay? Explain the wee girls across the road from each other. So that person can go in there and have an English sign language interpreting the question. The answers can come in in Welsh sign language, totally different again. 
Now, as much as the DVSA have done that, put that on the screen, oh, great, okay, fine. It's that size. So to be able to see intricate work that's done quite close to the body, very difficult to see and pick out. You can't enlarge the screen. So that's the first problem. So the questions could be read out by some days, English, BSL, and the answers could be read out by some days, Welsh, right? So regional, everything, and, and the understanding of what's been asked. So you are allowed uh, an interpreter, you book an interpreter. So I'll phone up the theory test centre, or the theory test place, book the test, find the deaf pupil, we require a BSL interpreter, we require a separate room, an extra time. So that's all put into place. Um, candidate will then arrive, they'll get a couple of minutes signing with the, the interpreter because probably the probably what you'll find is the document is quite small, so the probably would be um they know each other, probably know each other, okay, or, or they've been to other things with each other before. So they'll have a quick chat, make sure they understand each other's language, um, and then they'll go and sit the test. So the interpreter will sit, read out the question, and then they'll read out the answers. And then it's down to the pair, you know, the, the candidate to, to be answering the question. Um, they are given extra time for it because obviously it's getting done two languages. But yeah, um, I mean, I had a pupil go up a uh, wee while ago. I just never have I ever said extra time. Anyway, the candidate was quickly removed from the room. That was time up. Um, and uh, when I got the phone call from the mum and quite distressed, I was like, what's going on? She goes, oh, this time's, time's up. And I'm like, what do you mean time's up? They get extra time. I had to phone DVSA, spoke to somebody there. He recommended that I phone the the test centre back, wrote an email, and down to their mistake, and they admitted that they said straight off the bat, Terrible, sorry, your candidate's had an awful experience, blah, 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 blah. What we'll do now is uh, we'll, we'll um, rebook him another test, making sure there's extra time in place. You know, I mean, spe most special needs are going to need extra time. So, and I've never, I've always asked for a BSL interpreter and an extra room. That normally denotes extra time. The the person that booked it hadn't put in the extra time. So, um, that's he gets his test rebooked. So, I mean, they, they are they are very good. Um, uh, I can't fault my theory test centre, Glasgow. They've been exceptional with this candidate. Above and beyond, the mum's allowed to sit in the waiting room and wait for them. So, which is normally no. Um, so, I, I can't fault them. But... I mean, they try their best. They try, you know, they're, they're trying their best. But to allow the BSL interpreter into the room now is is a big thing. And I mean, they'll be watched. They'll be camera watched all the time to make sure there's no extra additional information getting given and things. But um, yeah, it's been a better experience for him. But oh, for a good while, you were sitting there with these two tiny wee video squares. You know. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. Um. Do you think there's anything else you want to get across to the instructors listening about this whole process? Don't be frightened of it. Give it a chance, give it a shot. Um, if somebody approaches you that's um, finally deaf, um, you know, ha try and have a chat. Um, how, how do they learn? Everybody learns differently. Um, you know, what's the lip reason like? Um, what's their understanding of written English like? you know and just sort of take it from there but but don't don't shy away from them you know it's very very clever uh the only they've got everything else going they just can't hear you there's nothing nothing wrong with them you know because i know a lot of people are kind of like oh but how'd you do this how'd you do that oh you just adapt but you know in the car you should be working as a team you know um i suppose uh, like the, i would now you know when i get a student come to me i talk to them how do you learn you know mm -hmm. How long do you think you can drive for? Do we need to take a break during lessons? You know, yeah. these sort of questions. I suppose they're the same questions you would ask to, to yeah. a deaf learner. You... Sometimes what you find with the deaf community, um, and this is from my experience, um, is that some of them have had an outstanding help, support, backing, um, and they've gone to university, no issues at all. Um, whereas uh, some other pupils have come in and they've really, really struggled. They struggle through school. Everything's very much basic. And this is probably the first time they're actually being assessed on anything. So, you know, the, the, the theory test builds them full of fear. Um, there's so many words in theory tests that, I mean, I, I do quite a lot of support with one of my pupils at the moment who's, who's looking at theory tests. And you'll read the question and I'll point out about four or five words in the sentence. I said, do you understand? And he's like, no. 
So I'll either write it down um, and I've got a nice big list where I'll try and go off and make the words simpler, modify it, right? Sort of modify the words a wee bit um, and try and get them to understand, right, this is what this word means. So when you see that word, it means this. Um, and they kind of go, right, that's an awful lot to remember. But the, the, the I mean, camber, um, you know, you have to sit and explain what camber is adverse. Maximum, minimum, that's also another one because they get it muddled up. Yeah. Um, so it's trying to break things down like that and, and getting them to understand. So sometimes their understanding of the English language, the written English language, it's just not there. And that just happens to be wherever they've been schooled or, you know, because as I said, my pupils, I've had ones that have gone to university, no problem at all. Yeah, I've had other ones that, you know, they're, they're literally rattling walking even thinking about doing a theory test or, a, or an actual practical exam because they've never been assessed essentially as you would do with anyone you treat them as individuals and work with them that, that the whole thing is fascinating for me um and i was saying to you before we started recording that uh I, i'm looking to learn bsl this year at some point so mm -hmm. um, yeah maybe we'll see um but i i also <laughs> wanted to ask you a little bit about today about cpd and, and your take on this because you're one of the most enthusiastic partakers of personal slash professional development that I've come across. So yeah, well, I'm just keen to know why, you know, what what draws you into to this development world? I always try to, um, I think I first started off with um, with uh, Bob's course. Um, friends and I went to uh, uh, Castle Cairn and Cumberland Old and went and did one of his courses um, we struggled, I think, originally. Not many people ventured into Scotland. Um, and uh, so it was a lot of time and money on our part to actually make the efforts come down past the border. Um, but when Zoom stuff kicked off, well, that's been it really, isn't it? You, you don't feel left out anymore. I think that's, that's a lot of it. I found your podcast, I think, just as we were in lockdown, so you don't think you long started um, because you were what 2021 20, end of 2021 20, at start so April 2021 yeah right so I think I pretty much caught on to that quite quickly there'd been another podcast I'd listened to um and uh yeah no they weren't engaging let's put it that way um and then I happened to find you so that was that good because I, I actually remember I was clean uh, I was actually doing the garden with a lockdown and you put something up and uh actually laughing, walking around. <laughs> I said laughing, walking around my garden with my earbuds and people are probably thinking, what is going on? Um, but it was just, it was, it was, it was your banter. You, as, as Scott say, your banter, your banter was good. Um, and uh, and you weren't afraid to ask either. <laughs> uh, and then um, starting to see more people coming out within the industry, you've got um, Lee and Mick, quite interesting the way they were looking at things understanding a wee bit more about the coaching side as much as you're, you're asking certain things it was developing that and working out which pupil works well with certain things um i i hate scaling i don't like it myself i think i no um and i wouldn't i can't ask a deaf person to scale and ask an autistic person to scale it's not going to happen either so a lot of that but you were trying to kind of like you know backs and forwards well I don't scale why don't you scale and um, because I've got this this and that but it'll work no actually you'll find it doesn't um, and then given scenarios of why it wouldn't and you know scaling in a deaf person's a body sign so it's up and down the body um, so having chat but not just thinking in myself oh that's that's my you know that doesn't work for me blah 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 but speaking to other people um, and getting their opinions and you're oh it doesn't matter what you do you're, you, you always walk away with something you, you, you see, even if it's another instructor that's on the same Zoom thing, you're like, ah, it's all that. That's a good one. Um, or getting somebody else's just be opinion on something, and you might not agree with the person that's taking the course. So you know, you kind of you push it a wee bit. You know, that doesn't work for me. I don't feel it. You know, so seeing how their responses come back, but I love CPD. Absolutely love. It. We did an accreditation recently for uh, Drive Build Scotland and the CPD things thing that came up. They were like that. Do you actually have time at night yourself? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was just listed, listed. But it's great. I mean, see what you've put out. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. 
Um, and there's some sometimes there's certain ones that, that don't interest me. I just don't need to watch it, do I? Um, and then there's other ones that I'm like, come on, hurry up and upload it. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I listen to this one. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fascinating for me because people like yourself make me want to do CPD. You know, when I see how much you get from it, not just my stuff, I'm not just meaning my stuff, but the stuff mm-hmm. that I see you do to so I see you travelling from Scotland down to the, the expos in Nottingham or, or wherever we go into, you know. I, I, that's I'm, worth its weight in salt. That, that, yeah. that, that's, uh-huh. Last, um, this year's one, we actually, um, myself and my friend Josephine, we had an itinerary. Now, we missed the first one. Um, I think because we bumped into you, so we'll blame you. <laughs> so we missed our first place we were meant to go. Um, but not just the, the, the breakout rooms and talk out rooms and, and all the stalls that were there, it was the people outside as well. You know, they had the HGV, they had the crash bus, they had, um, you know, all, uh, all the disabilities cars where you could go and actually, you know, look at hand controls, left foot sellers, over rings, over rings, whatever. Um, it's just, it was really good, really good. And there was a nice buzz about there. We don't get something that big up here. We've got an MSA association that we go to in November every year and they get great people to come and talk. Um, and it, it it's good, but it's nothing like that. I mean, that that was, you know, two of us were like that. This is great. <laughs> we get an overnight stay as well. <laughs> but this year we had to drive it because we couldn't get the train down because the tracks were all flooded. So last minute decision, we nearly weren't going. Last minute decision, we'll just jump to Aaron, we'll come down. So, yeah. What have you got planned for 2024 CPD-wise? Is there a lot of fun coming up? Yeah, we've got Stuart, Stuart Lockray, Sprite Coaching. I'm doing that. Um, signed up for that. Um, I have to do mandatory training with um, Drive Build Scotland, which is, uh, I think, Oxford Brooks course. They put you through um, quite a, a, a university course as well. Um and more of you. <laughs> more of me. More of you. More oh, Terry. Feel, um, feel sorry yeah, for you. <laughs> no, it's it's um I just I just I don't know, I just love doing it. I've got a few books that I've got recently um that I've come through, so I need to give them a reread. Um but yeah, there's I think there's quite a nice group of let's say trainers, but I don't know if that's the right word. People that are doing the courses, brain's gone. People that make the courses or do the courses or offer the courses, they're the ones that, uh, you know, they, they, they make you walk away, they make you think. And the fact that it's all on Zoom, that you don't have to leave your house to do it, I think is a really, really good thing now because nobody, well, I'm not saying nobody, people do come up to Scotland now. You've got Bob, you've got Mick and Lee. Um, you've got Dan Hall um, I think Confident Drivers have come up as well um, so we're starting to get more coming up to Scotland but you know for a, I mean I'm 20 years down the line as a drive instructor there was nothing, you had to travel south of the border to see anybody or hear anything um, and I'm sure Stuart said that a few times as well but well, you know Zoom, brilliant, excellent opens it to everybody I'm, uh, I'm coming up to Scotland in January uh, so Ooh. you know, um, but the the Zoom thing I'm a big fan of as well, and and one thing I try and do over here as well, and this isn't meant to plug anything, it's just something I, I believe in, is I record stuff. You know, I, I love it when people come to stuff live. You know, you've been to quite a few other things I've done live because mm-hmm. I think there's always a different feel to watching mm-hmm. something where you can partake when you're seeing it live. As a, it's like the difference between watching a pre-recorded football match and going to a stadium. You know, there's a difference there. Yeah. Um, but I record almost everything I do and put it in, in my group or wherever it is I'm doing it because I want people to be able to go back to it. And I think yeah. that it's important for that. So I, I, that's been the big one for Zoom for me. It's It's not just that, again, I'm down south i'm in england so i get easier access but it's not just the ease of access it's the fact that go back to it and do it again we can do it again if there's something you missed or something you want to revisit we can do yeah which i think is massive having said that i'm also a big believer in that in-person contact in-person development so again i go back to what i said before this is why i've been impressed with you and i specifically wanted to ask you around this because you just take it everything you do it all. It's, 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 it, it keeps me going, seeing people like you. I don't know. 
know, it's just, um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, I just like, everybody has a different take. There'll always be one that just clicks. And then you can maybe kind of work it out, okay, right, so, you know, maybe take something from you, take something from Bob, take something from Ray, take something, and, and you work it out and you bring it all into to your own head um, and you take that information forward. Um, because not not one person's come up with the, the right plan, so to speak, that fits every single human, if you think yeah. of it that way. We'll learn, we'll take in information differently. Um, I'm sure there's times where I've sat and gone blah 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 to, to a friend and she's gone no I took it as blah 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 and you're like ah, right so yeah but it's it's interesting it's all interesting you know the, the videos you put up the stuff that you do um, it is it, 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 you know it's also opened up to a lot of more more people you know you've brought in so many different people into you know, your Meganars, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there was people that I hadn't heard of. Um, so you go off and you have a wee look for them and you kind of work out what they've been doing. And then there's other ones where you sit, you know, there's been other ones where I've sat and thought, what are you, what have you got to do with the drive instructor <laughs> industry? And then they'll come out with something and you're like, oh, right, okay, fair enough. But yeah, no, I mean, in the car, I mean, that's a, in the car, I, I sometimes catch your new ones in the car, and I'm like, "That's great, thanks, Terry." Mm-hmm. Did you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, do you know what I, I found today fascinating? I really have. Um, I think that, yeah, listening to you talk about it like that, it's opened to my eyes to a lot of stuff that I didn't know. So I'm sure a lot of listeners will have. Well, even just that last bit, I love what you were saying there around CPD talking about. You mentioned that you'll go through some stuff that doesn't connect for you and you don't view that as a negative. It's like, right, okay, that didn't work. I won't no. do it again. So uh-huh. I, I found today absolutely fascinating. I'm sure Alyssa as well. So, you know, big thank you for joining me. If anyone thank did you. want to reach out and reach out to you and find out a bit more or ask you some questions, where would be the, the best place to find you? On Facebook. Um, I don't have anything else. Just Facebook. Um, probably Facebook Messenger. Um, probably the best place. Uh, and if you go into the quest box then hit me up on my page on Facebook and I'll go and look <laughs> <laughs> well I'll share the links in uh, in the show notes and apologies in advance if you get like lots of instructors now <laughs> clamoring for, for a bit of Fiona's hand but, but thank you for joining me <laughs> Stephen an absolute pleasure no it's been my pleasure thanks Terry so a big thank you to Fiona there for joining me on today's episode as I mentioned at the end, really insightful. I love episodes like this where I know next to nothing when I come in and come away having a much better understanding and going back to what Fiona said at the start, being more aware and having better knowledge. And I'm definitely both as a result of that. If you are wondering what the uh, the rustling noise was at the end of that episode, we were joined by Fiona's dogs. Uh, which is always a treat. Everyone loves dogs. Dogs are awesome. Dogs are the best. Anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about dogs. Instead, what I'm going to talk about for a moment is a brand new podcast starting on the 1st of January, and it's called One Minute Tips for Driving Instructors. So as I said, that's kicking off on the 1st of January, and it'll come out every Monday for the entirety of 2024, and hopefully beyond. The premise is that Sometimes these longer episodes can be difficult to listen to, especially in one go. So if we can c- create a little bank of short episodes, then, you know, between lessons, maybe you can get stuck into those as well. So I want you to go to wherever you listen to your podcast and search for One Minute Driving Instructor Tips and then click subscribe. There is a trailer for you to check out already. So go and click subscribe and um, that way you'll be getting those new episodes into your feed every time we release a new one, every Monday from January the 1st. This is also the last episode before Christmas, so I want to take a moment to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. As this episode goes out, it is Christmas Eve, so, you know, whenever you're listening, whether it's Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or any time after, I hope that you've had or are having a wonderful time. But all that's left for me to say now is stay safe, and let's keep raising standards. 
the Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook, talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them. For those of you who are still unsure and are wondering, I'm about to answer the most important question for this time of year. Yes, Die Hard is a Christmas film. <laughs> 